Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now this is the second largest group I've ever spoken to. Um, and much more friendly than the first because it was a, a company that was floundering. And I remember being backstage, it was about 10 years ago, it was in Orlando. And the CEO was saying, look, we're really struggling. We've had a few scandals. Things aren't going our way. I'm taking over, but I may be sued shortly. And uh, I hope you can turn it around for us. <laughs> well, you know, I have a saying that I strive to be positive 98% of the time, 2% learning how to be positive. And I've really never mastered the 98-2 percentage. And I'm coaching now 31 years, and I've been striving for that. Always be positive is something that I'm after, and this is the first year in my coaching career I've come close to that. Because today, in, and I grew up the same way most of you did, trying to achieve success. And, you know, success is something special to me. It's not just about winning. In 96, we wrote a best-selling business book, the number one book of the year in, by the New York Times. And it took us three months to write the book and three months to decide on the title. We could not decide. The book company, the publisher, the writer, and myself sat down and we could not decide on the title. One day I woke up and I said, I've got it. And we called it Success is a Choice. And it truly is. Everything in our lives is a choice. We can wake up a certain way, go to sleep a certain way, and it's us, it's up to all of us to understand how to be successful, how to win, and how to choose winning over losing. Now that's pretty, it's a pretty interesting statement, how to choose winning over losing. Well, when you wake up in the morning, and tonight will be a good example, you're in Las Vegas, you've had all day meetings, You'll probably stay up, network, some may gamble, some may enjoy some shows, great restaurants, and you'll go to sleep. And you'll probably be a little fatigued. And how you wake up tomorrow morning will be interesting. Because I've been choosing to wake up each morning a different way in the past two years. I want to let you know I've Although we've won a lot, and I was listening to the intro, we've had three Final Fours and five years at Kentucky and three different schools have gone to a Final Four. We've won a championship. We've been a runner-up. But it hasn't always been that way. No coach can boast that type of record. Because just a short while ago, after winning a championship and then being runner-up at a champion, I was enticed into a different situation. The professional ranks called once again. I coached the New York Knickerbockers 20-something years ago. And then from there, the Boston Celtics called me and, and said, look, we'd like you to be the coach. Then I started writing down the pros and cons. And the pros were really about 10 yards long. Two of my children were born in Boston. I attended school at the University of Massachusetts. My first head coaching job was Boston University college friends, dear friends, the unbelievable tradition of the Celtics to turn that around. And I had about 30 reasons why to take the job. They just came off winning 15 games out of 82. So there's no place to go but up. And then I left out one small item. And it wasn't until one of my players, and I was also president of the team as well, not until negotiating his contract when I said, look, this is all I can give you. And he said, coach, would you have taken that to be the coach of the Celtics? And I said, of course not. And he said, how do you expect me to take it? And for the first time, I realized that my left-hand side of the ledger, those 30 things of why I was choosing, was really not the reason. It was the 10-year contract 
and the $50 million they were paying me was the real reason I was taking that job. Now, by the way, that's not a bad reason. I don't mean to say that that's a bad, it's not a bad reason. But it's not the right reason. It really is not. See, we live in a different age today. This is the age of instant gratification. We are part of the microwave society. We want to put a meal into the microwave, and in two to five minutes, we want something to come out that's extraordinary. We do not want to move up the ladder. We do not want to deserve victory. We want to be a CEO in a very short period of time. We want to live in a beautiful home, have nice clothes, drive a nice automobile, but we want it now. We don't want to listen to a 10-year plan, a three-year plan. We want it now. The athletes I coach want it now. Well, when I look back on the failure, by the way, of the Boston Celtics, we went from 15 to 36 wins, which is okay. And then we floundered and stayed the same. And when I failed, I looked back on it and said, why? Why did you fail? Did the ping pong balls come out the wrong way in the draft? First thing I did more than anything else is you must look in the mirror and own up to your mistakes. You cannot point fingers elsewhere. We are all going to make mistakes. It's how we handle the mistakes is the key to becoming extraordinary. 